we were discussing the usage of the mishra yantra and the specific usage of some of its instruments and soumya here had some questions related to the near chakra usage um, are there any specific times at which the observation has to be taken and other than that the readings would not be uh, readable yeah the near chakra of course its usage is very very specific to the time when uh, the observations are to be taken and you might have had heard the the local lore associated with this is that the near chakra help you measure the time at different locations mm -hmm. so four other locations okay. in the world and so on now the way uh, though that's not strictly true in the sense that you can't just measure time at any time for these different locations in the world but um, yes they do get tied down to uh, times when the sun what's called sun transits the meridian mm -hmm. at four different locations in the world okay. so the transiting of the meridian is to do with you know the sun rises and uh, moves up in the sky and then it sets mm -hmm. so as it does that there is a particular time of the day when it goes at the maximum altitude for that day so if you take the point uh, towards the south north draw an arc passing through the zenith so this is called meridian okay. it's local so for us uh, there would be the meridian uh, in this plane actually mm -hmm. where these uh, see all the instruments in the jantar mantra have these north south okay. alignments so the meridian plane this this triangular wall these triangular walls are all in the plane of the meridian mm -hmm. so the sun transits the meridian at noon time okay. the noon time for the sun for the sun sun according to the sun dial so what is no no though not quite exactly okay. yeah you you had some questions so um, the sun is at its peak point whenever uh, it, it's at the zenith or the huh so at different dates the altitude where the sun might be passing might be different but for that day the highest altitude sun gets when it is transiting the meridian mm -hmm. so that's when it tra i mean when the sun crosses this point i mean uh, the shadow uh, is the minimum at that time okay so that's that's called transiting the meridian now these arcs have been made in such a way that they are parallel to meridians of four other locations in the world so the, these these are four specific locations mm -hmm. made in such a way that you know there is i think some amount of uh, both the information about different uh, longitudes on earth as well as uh, aesthetics of the instrument went into decision for choosing these four different locations four different longitudes from us mm -hmm. on on the earth and so the meridian then is parallel to the uh, the arcs the near chakra arcs are parallel to the meridians of these four locations okay. in the world so when the sun transits the meridian at this location for instance mm -hmm. is when this instrument becomes active that's when if you put a rod here mm -hmm. the shadow of the rod is tangential to the scale okay so that's when you use this <laughs> this scale if you use this scale at other times some errors would come in so once again when the sun transits the meridian of this uh, related to this mm -hmm. then the shadow of this rod will become parallel here okay. so you take the reading here so this is the the morning these two and then in the afternoon at specific times when the rod mm, shadow becomes parallel to this and to this okay is when you take the declination measurement so these are specific times are there also indications of the noon time from this instrument ha huh, so this this in fact this uh, you use mm -hmm. uh, this time to measure the declination mm -hmm. but then that is the time when it is noon mm -hmm. at that location you are okay. right uh, okay. good that you pointed it out so that is how you connect mm -hmm. it to the time at different locations so if you take the reading of the time at that particular uh, time when you take the reading for declination that will be the time at the, uh, the noon time at ha that, uh, that will be the solar noon time at that location so that is one instant in the day when you get to know the time of those okay. uh, different locations mm -hmm. hmm. so that's the yeah, that's the usage of the near chakra so you can use it to measure declination you get an idea about the solar noon time at these different locations and uh, so essential is essential usage is for the declination measurement you can do it for the sun and you can do it for the stars also then uh, other there would be one, two arcs which are corresponding to greenwich and zurich are the other two arcs symmetrical and that is yeah as you can see from the instrument yeah. they are very symmetrical yeah. so it's possible that 
in some cases it was known as to what was at those longitudes but in other cases might also be a coincidence if there are observatories at those locations but uh, as I said the aesthetics of the instrument also went into making sure that it is absolutely symmetric on either side so that is how uh, this decision was made um, there are the are most of the instruments in the Mishraya Yantri used only once a day? Yeah, Mishra Yantra, in fact, uh, Mishra Yantra, and then uh, whenever you are measuring the declination, these are the instruments where um, you also have certain measurements mm -hmm. which, as you say, can be done only once a day, and they are for the uh, annual movements okay. that you are checking. Okay. So, when you are using the Samrat Yantra part of it, the quadrant mm -hmm. which you use to measure time then you are using, you are measuring something which will keep changing through the day. Mm -hmm. So then you take a number of readings mm -hmm. when it comes to time or when it comes to positions which you measure with Ram Yantra or Jay Prakash, positions changing throughout the day or night. So then you, but wherever you are making measurements related to declination. Mm -hmm. So those are when you are looking at annual movements okay. of objects, particularly the sun mm -hmm. or moon and whose declination changes through the year. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are also measuring declination or right ascension for stars to make your ephemeris. Mm -hmm. So even those, those then they might not even change through the year. But you want to take accurate readings of these. Mm -hmm. So you make these measurements once for the observatory. Mm 